Hello, my name is Lori Sean, and I was the sound designer for the Camouflage Project, a devised work conceived and produced at The Ohio State University. This is the story of agents from the Special Operations Executive during the Second World War. The project followed the lives of these special agents, agents charged with the task of sabotaging Nazi war efforts. We see the relationships they form, both with their trainers and handlers, as they start their training and learn what they need to know before we follow them into their assignments in occupied France. The show details their work and capture and documents their untimely death in Nazi concentration camps. The SOE as they were known were agents from the United Kingdom both men and women, who were trained to work with unoccupied territories. They created and maintained secret circuits that allowed their fellow agents to communicate covertly and established and specified new landing grounds for new agent drop-off. Though these agents were given a 50% chance of survival, they went boldly ahead and eventually became a widely feared organisation. In my research, I sought out visual as well as audio representations of the effects that I was to recreate. 1940s trains and aeroplanes were of particular importance, as it was vital for my recreation to be as true to the original sound as possible. The images of poppies were also significant, as poppies are used in the UK to signify the remembrance of war efforts. These collected images were shown in design meetings, as a way to help me communicate my ideas to other members of the design team. As I started on my sound design, it became evident through the collaboration with the directors that we were interested in using sound to move the action forward and to support the action on stage. In our discussions, we settled upon the idea of using the sound of a guillotine as a convention. It was used consistently at the end of scenes of interrogation, such as this one, to transition to the next scene. In this scene, images were projected onto the back wall and would switch periodically. To enhance the moment, I added the sound an old projector would make between the switching of images. I was concerned not only with the sound effect itself, but also with the quality of the sound. With some editing, I was able to achieve the desired outcome. In this video, we see and hear the moment an agent makes her first parachute jump into occupied France. The timing in this moment was critical, and sound enhanced the moment by supplementing the visual where the actors could not. With the projected image of an aeroplane moving on the back wall, it became an important consideration to move sound in the space, to support what the audience was seeing, and to create a live and encompassing sound experience. There were many moments in the play that required the movement of sound without any visual elements. There were planes that flew from behind the audience and over their heads, and planes that circled around them. Whenever the opportunity presented itself, I moved sound through the various speakers. In this instance, I wanted air raid sirens to come from varying speakers around the audience, creating a sense of urgency and panic as the volume increased and directionality changed. As the sound designer, I recorded music played by an actor in our most appropriate recording space and played the music back through the speakers as a backing track when needed. I also edited pieces of music. Here we see an actress during a dance number. The director wanted an upbeat beginning that would then transition to a somber end. I edited and cut the pieces of music together to create this desired effect. Throughout the performance, interviews with the survivors and their family members were played and projected on screens. For these sound cues, I had to familiarise myself with a media server called Wings Platinum and set appropriate levels for each interview segment. My name's Foote, MRD Foote. I was the official historian of SOE in France 40 years and more ago. Werner Atkins was the brains of Buckmaster's F independent French section. 
Also through wings, projections of moving images, such as this train, were played back. For this example, I needed to compile effects to match the movement and action on screen. The train sound started in the upstage speakers and gradually, in time with the visual, moved closer to the audience before coming to its explosive end in all speakers at varying levels of intensity. One of the challenges I faced were the acoustic properties of the space that we had created. Thurber Theatre is the 600-seat proscenium stage at the Ohio State University Department of Theatre. By moving the audience onto the Thurber stage, several acoustic considerations needed to be addressed. Most prominent of these considerations was the tall, wide, reflective surface of the back wall to the audience's right, and the large, wide, vacuous space to their left. We countered this problem by placing speakers close enough to the audience, decreasing the need for loud volume levels. By doing so, we decreased the amount of sound being reflected by the wall and lost in the house. In conjunction with my sound engineer, Kevin Rodas, I generated all of the standard paperwork called for in a show. In addition, as a result of our unusual audience location, we were required to provide paperwork detailing cable runs and the layout of the new operator positions as supported by these images. The sound design was brought to life by two playback systems. All effects that were not tied to a projection would be played through SFX 6, while all effects tied to a projection would be played through wings. In both instances, I was responsible for volume and directionality. As a devised work, the collaboration effort was heightened. Our work became much more interwoven, and our discussions more detailed in comparison to working with a pre-existing script. During the development of the show, we had to be receptive to change and flexible with our designs, to ensure that our production did justice to the work and lives of the agents who died for our freedom. <laughs>